Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, we are here with another video by Sunny V2, and this is 10 biggest YouTubers who are permanently banned. Okay, um, I'm ready to hear some reasons why they're banned. So, if YouTube banned uh, people for no reason, then th there's a problem. So, yeah. If you guys are new to the channel here, make sure you are subscribed. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out this video. We're gonna list these 10 permanently banned oh, channels wait. from smallest to largest explaining what they did, beginning with the most unlikable channel in YouTube history called It's Owen. You might recognize the channel from his notoriously terrible intros. Like this video and subscribe right now or this spider will put on your ear while I remember this guy. I remember this guy. Today. Yeah. I to be honest, I was a kid watching this guy, thinking that like, oh my gosh, did he actually do that? Like, a YouTuber was injured in that video, but he didn't show any proof that 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 guy was injured. Like, for example, if a random YouTuber, like I I don't know, if Sunny VTube uh puts a clip of um. If Sony V2 make a video where uh, a YouTuber was dying and the next day the same YouTuber that that um, uploaded a video was fine, that means he's clickbaiting. So if Markiplier was like injured, in injured, yeah, the, there is a problem though. But this guy, I, I honestly don't like this guy anymore. Uh, it's Owen. Baited fake Mr. Beast scenarios. However, after Technoblade's passing on the 30th of June 2022, it's Owen took his scumbaggery to a point of no return. He'd upload a video titled Mr. Beast Final Goodbye to Technoblade, with the introduction stating this This is Mr. Beast's final goodbye to Technoblade and their last time playing Minecraft together. Although the video showed nothing more than Technoblade playing Minecraft and a completely fabricated Mr. Beast tweet. The video received over 800,000 views in under 24 hours yet with a top comment reading the amount of disrespect this guy has is unlike anything i've ever seen before complete and utter shame he was about to face some serious backlash just awful garbage i have more respect for shit stains in a gas station urinal than i do for owen youtubers clickbaiting technoblade's death for views has made me lose all faith in humanity it's just so messed up which is followed by another tweet from yeah um using someone's death for views that is something man that you can't do that at team youtube my youtube channel with 3.5 million subs just got terminated please help me get it back i'm so depressed right now i don't know what to do after youtube then responded owen doubled down by stating i never received any community guideline strikes so i didn't know what i was doing was violating the guidelines if i received just one strike that would have been enough for me to realize what i did was wrong please give me another chance i'm so depressed right now it's my only income owen then made another two tweets displaying how desperately he wanted his account back Although Team YouTube concluded their thread by stating, Update, we've reviewed your account and confirmed that your channel was correctly suspended due to explicit content. Note that you will not be able to access or create any other YouTube accounts. Although while everybody was happy to witness Owen's oh, band, laser beams, Stephen Dewitt's saw this? was a bit more controversial. Wow. Stephen had always been on YouTube's radar for his If I see a YouTuber who make a video about me being injured, but I'm fine... I'm gonna comment why. Why is he doing that for views? Like, why is he using someone's, um, someone's faking, like, faking YouTubers' injuries for views? style of content eating challenges prank videos and beginning in 2021 sponsored gambling uploads for which he was being paid more than a million dollars a month it's therefore no surprise that steve lent into this type of content even picking up a sponsorship from stake until he made one simple error undoing everything that he'd worked for youtube has an extremely strange rule where you're allowed to say the name of any gambling website but you can't show the url of the website with the dot com included well in june 2010 
2022 where Steve uploaded a gambling video like any other, although the URL had been left in as his editor forgot to blur it. Despite Steve having no strikes on any of his channels, YouTube made the choice to permanently delete all of them. I'm allowed to oh, say wow. I'm playing the website, but they would go to deleting my entire main channel because on my second channel, it wasn't fully blurred. After which Steve said this. They called me the day of deletion and it was a girl. She seemed pretty stoked I was getting deleted. And huh. I was like, yeah, she seemed happy. And I was like, I was with me and my editor and we're like, we're like bro, like, she's happy. As a result, the Nelk boys were warned about filming with him. They basically said like, your channel's gonna be deleted if Steve's in your videos. Which might be harsher treatment than that given to Leafy. Between Damn. 2013 and 2016, Leafy built a reputation for uploading edgy content, which flowed well with YouTube zeitgeist at the time. However, between 2017 and 2020, Leafy went on hiatus before returning with a pretty controversial approach. He'd upload a video titled Content Nuke Pokimane in which he'd offer pretty reasonable criticism. 80% of Pokimane's streams is just her watching videos adding actually nothing to what she's watching whatsoever. However, he'd then go on to upload 12 different videos clickbaiting Pokimane in the title and thumbnail while talking about unrelated topics in the video itself such as finance and investing. Of his last 15 videos, 12 of them were on Pokimane. Having Damn, this guy Pingu... Ping... Pokemon in the title and thumbnail. That's viewed penguin, as uh, Despite Penguin Zero? Strikes on his channel, Leafy woke up to a permanent ban for creating... I don't know how many... I don't know how many videos or drama this guy finds. Morning at Team YouTube, my channel was suspended yesterday. Curious if there's anything I could do to get it reinstated, or if there's any statement on this you could give on this. However, despite his tweet, Leafy seemed pretty unconcerned about having his channel deleted. If I am gonna be banned, like, so be it. The website is shit. What else is there need? Like, there's nothing else that needed to be said. Pokemon took to Twitter stating, I know I'm gonna get asked this, so I'd like to clarify I had nothing to do with Leafy's ban, before adding, don't want my silence to leave room for assumptions. Leafy's ban was bound to happen eventually. However, someone whose termination was lame? surprising was that of Kabi Lami. He gained 100 million TikTok followers in less than five months, and with YouTube launching their own shorts program, Kabi started posting across the two platforms. His notoriously funny skits exploded on YouTube as they had on TikTok, giving him over 800 million views and 2 million subscribers. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. On the platform. This was then followed by another 800 million views in the next month, and after only four months of uploading to YouTube, Kabi Lami had racked up 2.4 billion views and 5.2 million subscribers. He was then... That was fast. Why? Why? Well, you see, this wasn't actually Kabi Lami. It was an impersonator who was simply reposting his content to oh, YouTube. Oh, what? He gained 2.4 billion views before YouTube ever realized, and this wasn't the only account doing it. Only five days beforehand, YouTube had banned another Kabi Lami impersonator with 4.84 million subscribers, after which YouTube found a third impersonator who'd gained over 100 million... How many people impersonating YouTubers for money? As a result, Kabi began uploading content to his own official channel, which remains very much active, unlike Jay, Jay Station. Station. Oh my gosh, I remember this guy. Titled, my girlfriend Alexia died rest in paradise, in which he'd state the following. Last night, we lost Alexia to a drunk driver, guys. She was on the way to pick up something for our video we were making on our second channel, Dream Team. <laughs> Here, guys. As mentioned, Jay Station's girlfriend had apparently died in a car crash, prompting him to upload another video visiting the spot where it supposedly happened. <laughs> Okay. However, only three days later, Jay Station began using his girlfriend's death to gain extra engagement. As you guys know, my girlfriend Alexia just passed away in a tragic accident, guys. We're Wait, I I don't know if I saw this channel called anything like I I I don't know. Um, I I don't know. Maybe I'll search it up because I know I I know I don't know if Jay Station fakes his girlfriend's death. Ouija board challenge on my dead girlfriend. Let's smash the like button right now, guys. One like equals one prayer for Alexia, guys. Rest in peace. Prompting some ordinary gamers to investigate if she'd even died at all. No, I don't have anything by that name on the system. Nobody by that name specifically has suffered any form of death, right? No. As a result of the video, Alexia came forward confirming that she hadn't actually died. Jay faked my death. I felt oh. sick to my stomach. So she... So he did fake his girlfriend's so death. Add that the couple had since broken up. Like the times that he was mean to me, it's just like he was so mean, and I just don't know why. 
Despite having posted years worth of unsavory content, it seemed faking his girlfriend's death was a step too far, as YouTube would permanently delete J Station's channel on the 12th of March 2021. J Station responded by stating, I didn't even do anything wrong, and I made videos all year getting no controversy. However, when these delusions failed to bring back his channel, he concluded, I'm going to sue them. Crazy. Anyways, I'm done. Nothing I can do now. Which is the same conclusion drawn by Seven Supergirls. The channel began in 2008 Wait. and featured seven what? girls for the seven days of the week that upload everything from skits I thought, to I thought, I thought, I thought they looked familiar but I don't know I never heard of it I never heard of this channel when the channel took a pretty dark turn the channel was owned by a 55 year old named Ian Rylett who on the 17th of August 2018 was accused of acting inappropriately with one of the seven supergirls roughly seven months later Ian pleaded guilty to the incident and wasn't only sentenced to three months in prison but was also legally banned from work Working on YouTube. As a result, Seven Supergirls was terminated on the 12th of March 2019, at the time being the most subscribed channel ever to receive a permanent ban. That would be until nine months later, when YouTube's scummiest copycat was banned for stealing content. The Indonesian channel named Kalon Sojana had gained over 13 million what? subscribers by employing a highly unethical strategy that essentially find already successful videos spoken in English before copying the thumbnail in its entirety, adding the their own watermark and uploading it to Indonesian YouTube where the original creator had no way of finding it. However, all of this changed in November 2019 when British YouTuber JT posted his own upload titled YouTuber with 12 million subs steals my video. This channel had the audacity to steal my thumbnail, put an emoji on it and then put their watermark on it. They put their watermark on my thumbnail and claimed it as theirs. This YouTuber has stolen my thumbnail, stolen all the information from my video. They literally watched my video and took everything they took wow. the they gave me no credit for my own dms this guy has literally just ripped me off completely okay jt then highlighted another crazy fact this guy is the biggest youtuber in indonesia and he's stealing my stuff he steals from people so much okay that he's got in his description for copyright matters please contact us at this email he did this because he knows he's stealing content leading the indonesian media to talk about Callan's unethical practices a youtube account from an indonesian with more than 12 million million subscribers has been accused of stealing other people's content with the article attaching a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the videos that, that just reminds me of this russian guy who copies mr beast and other youtubers videos oh my gosh and yet and then this guy steals information for from another youtuber okay yeah that and then like putting and then claiming it it's his own People will notice. People would notice if you're you're stealing someone's con like someone's content. Like trying to deny all this, you would still get in trouble. Stolen. Having been exposed by his own country, Callan wrote an apology on Twitter translating to We from the entire extended family of Callan Sarjana apologize to the YouTube channel JT for using ideas, thumbnails, and video prototyping without permission before posting a second tweet reading Thank you for all your corrections. Hopefully the things that have happened will truly become a lesson for us to not make any mistake in the future. However, it was already too late. JT and two other YouTubers who had their videos stolen chose to simultaneously Simultaneously copyright strike Kalan Sarjana, terminating the channel on the grounds of multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement regarding material the user posted. He was a fraud, he deserved it, you steal content, you pay the price, that's just how it is. Although Indonesia wasn't the only country to lose their most subscribed channel, as Turkey's biggest was also banned at around the same time. The channel began with two kids and their father Muhammad, focusing on children's content before they'd find themselves involved in Elsagate. Elsagate was the for a oh my gosh content, where youtubers took kid-friendly characters like spider-man and Elsa oh my and gosh why inappropriate videos have infiltrated youtube kids often showing popular children's characters in violent and even sexual scenarios the motive behind the videos was pretty damn obvious here's one from one month ago 117 million views although with so many people watching parents began to talk about it there is a terrifying new trend in middle schoolers that i need to tell you about prompting advertisers to pull their ads oh from the site no. we are shocked and appalled to see that our ads have appeared alongside 
promote such exploitative and inappropriate content, said a Mars spokesperson in a statement. We've taken the decision to immediately suspend all our online advertising on YouTube and Google globally, therefore forcing YouTube to take a stance against these sketchy videos. Only four days after Mars and Adidas pulled their ads, YouTube removed over 150,000 Elsa Gay videos. That is a lot. On more than 625,000 videos and terminated more than 270 accounts, one of which being Turkey's biggest channel with over 15 million subs. Although no termination is stranger than that of Manoj Paraha. The channel was included amongst hundreds of banned multi-million subscriber Indian shorts channels who all employed the exact same strategy. They'd find Western videos that had been successful in English, cut them down into shorts and provide a Hindi voiceover, essentially re-uploading other people's content with their language being the only difference. In an article discussing these what? channels, one owner stated, I would pick any video and do a voiceover. I realized that if we do voiceovers in a short story, then we're bound to get views so I just stuck to that. Although this wasn't the end of the article. Over the past few months, he claims eight such fact channels have been banned. The rate at which YouTube grew their channels, it's also taking them away at the same rate. Many of these fact channels add voiceovers to content belonging to other creators, and that it's important for creators to only upload videos that they have made or are authorized to use. The biggest of these channels, Manoj Paraha, was able to gain 20 million subscribers in just over a year before YouTube also smashed it with the ban hammer. However, even then, growing that Super much, Jojo nursery rhymes was banned with even more. Super Jojo caught copying Coco Melon. This Reddit post referenced a cartoon brew article reading Super Jojo shamelessly free rides on Coco Melon success by closely copying and exploiting every possible element of the Coco Melon channel, sometimes even frame by frame, which was displayed in the previously mentioned Reddit post where user Billy Disney showed just how badly the copying really was. As a result, in August 2021, Coco Melon launched a lawsuit against Super Jojo, claiming that the defendant has built its Super Jojo YouTube business by blatantly copying Coco Melon. One month after this, a new article was published reading, YouTube terminates Coco Melon rival Super Jojo channel with 22 million subscribers, citing that they had received multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement. Super Jojo's ban lasted for two- I don't know if any of you, um, got your video, got, uh, got any of your videos been copyright- been- Ugh, can't talk. I don't know if any uh, other YouTubers would copy you for um, for views. Because if they do, and they got and they grew more, then I suggest you guys terminate the channel. Months before the channel was then restored. However, this wasn't the end of the story. The channel's growth took a nosedive following their return to YouTube. And in July 2023, a jury has decided that Baby Bus committed copyright infringement with its animated series Super Jojo. And as a result, they were ordered to pay Coco Melon $23.5 million. In that very same month, Super Jojo wiped their channel clean, deleting everything down to their profile picture. So while the channel is still technically active, Super Jojo could easily be considered the largest youtube channel that's permanently banned damn man that is crazy there people can get ter terminated for or banned for many reasons like stealing uh content or faking your the faking um your death for views and i, I don't know i i maybe i should Maybe there's maybe there's more reasons than um than those or like sometimes you just gotta follow what direct what 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 you want to do on for YouTube uh content. So yeah, that was the sun. That was uh, Sunny VTube's video there. That was that was shocking as well. Also, impersonating YouTubers for subscribers and views. That's that's messed up, though. I mean, you name yourself, like, impersonating someone, and then they think it's you scamming you. Like, there is a lot of SML fake channels who just re-uploads um, SML's content. I know SML did this because of... Sup I know SML did the Superbam Inc. Incorporated copyright claims because he wanted to take down... He wanted to copyright um, uh, channels who re-uploaded his videos. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video here, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.